Good morning, LCC, and welcome again to our service this Sunday, 18th of April, 2021. Here are the announcements for uh, this week. We have a special general meeting on the 25th of uh, April, 2021, which is next Sunday. The agenda will be or will include the COE report on bereavement policy and report by Peter and Chip on pursuing the church insurance policy, presentation of proposed draft amendments to the LCC constitution, and then presentation of the Safina family proposal. Please uh, purpose to attend that. We'll uh, be glad to meet. More information will be coming to you during the week. <clears throat> Please pray also for the sanctuary construction team as they embark on the next phase of generating architectural drawings for our new sanctuary and proceed to do groundbreaking in the coming weeks specifically please pray for approvals at the county offices pray also for the process of releasing resources to undertake this work here are some of the timelines uh, that the team has given to us they intend to do groundbreaking and site blessing at 11 a.m. on the 2nd of May at the LCC grounds, and all are welcome to that. On the 3rd, they'll be handing over the site to the contractor, and by the, by the 15th of June, they hope to have completed at least the first phase and handed it over to the trustees. Please also pray for a quick resolution of the lockdown to enable God's people to gather again in places of worship. We are thankful for the numbers are um, manageable, but still the threat is real. Let's just continue to distance and to sanitize and to stay uh, within the uh, protocols that the government has given. We continue to pray for the Munenes as they make their move to Tana River, that God will provide for their resource needs and give them wisdom. We also want uh, to remember to remind all our members that um, even if churches are not meeting, we still have uh, expenses to meet. Please send your tithes and offerings to till number 926-242. 2 and send the confirmation message to our treasurer Morris on uh, 0 111 In the same vein, we have opportunities for designated giving, which you can um, contribute to for specific causes of the ministry of the, at the church. We have recently had people giving specifically to the Instruments Fund that right now stands at 15,000. We would like a lot of people to give towards this because we are looking to buy instruments both for our current worship place but also as we upgrade to the new worship center a little later. We've also had people give to the Junction program for the kids Please feel free to give to a specific cause. That means that you don't have to give an offering. Once you do that, just let the treasurer know that that gift is designated for that spe specific cause. Those are the announcements that um, I have for today. May God bless you. Amen. We will go into pastoral prayer now. We want to thank God really for his love for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you that uh, you have sustained us over the time that we have been uh, apart and locked away by the circumstances that we find ourselves in. We want to bless you, Heavenly Father, that you have not forgotten us. We thank you, dear Lord, for the grace that you continue to extend in our way, in our direction, to our families, to our friends, and thank you for keeping us safe. Even though we know of uh, relatives who have uh, been direly affected by the pandemic, we also want to just pray that uh, thank you that we have um, we are here and able to hear what um, is going on around us. 
We bless you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for continuing to bless us in every way. And this uh, morning, Lord, we want to praise you. Praise you for Martin and Jacinta who had their marriage yesterday. As they start their uh, marriage together, we just want to pray for them. We want to pray, dear Lord, that uh, you will bless that uh, family that you'll provide for their needs according to your riches and glory. They're going to have to make a number of decisions that um, bear on the family. We want to pray for wisdom for Martin as the head of family. We want to pray, dear Lord, that he will be strong in every way to give leadership. Um, we want to continue just uh, thanking you for those who gave of resources, of time. Thank you for the safety that you provided for them. And even, Lord, for the window that you provided for Martin to be able to travel to Butere to be able to participate in this wedding. We bless you, Heavenly Father. We also want to remember uh, to pray for Helen and her family with the loss of her uncle, Lord. We just buried the gentleman on Wednesday and there was so much pain in the family, Lord. And we just want to pray that, uh, Father, you will comfort them at this time bring comfort to each that is hurting and also lord uh, fill the gaps that um, have been uh, left by his departure uh, we want to pray for healing emotionally for the wife and for the uh, sons that uh, lord you will be close to them as they make that uh, transition uh, without him Lord, we continue also to pray for rain in this country, especially this part of the country. We've not had enough rain there. It's, it's come late and it's also not, not enough to, uh, to, to, to make crops grow. We want to pray, Lord, a special prayer for rain. We know in the past, dear Lord, that um, you have listened to our prayers and you have answered us and brought abundant rain. And even in the Bible, Lord, we know of times when people prayed and you brought rain, and you brought peace, and you brought comfort uh, when there was anxiety. So, Lord, we pray for rain at uh, this season, that there'll be enough of it, not destructive, but enough to produce crops and food for your people. Lord, we also want to remember LCC as a church. We have our special general meeting this coming Sunday, and there are many and very important issues before us. Lord, as your word tells us, Lord, unless the Lord watches over us, the watchman works in vain. And LCC desires not just wisdom, but desires uh, resources in the days, the coming days. And this sub particular SGM will be talking about those. Father, I pray for wisdom. And we pray also that uh, you, the judgment that you give us will be wise and right as we make uh, decisions for your church here at LCC. So we pray for the leadership, we pray for COE as they meet this afternoon to make uh, certain decisions regarding that particular meeting. Pray that, Lord, there'll be presence of mind, there'll, be, there'll also be wisdom, and we'll also just have uh, the moderation of the Holy Spirit. Father, we want to pray for uh, Pastor Bob, as he ministers to us this morning, we want to pray a special prayer for wisdom again, as it brings us the word of truth, uh, bringing from the uh, from the book of Nehemiah. Lord, we just want to pray for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit to to to, to break that word to us and feed us, so that our spirits may be strengthened and our lives may be may glorify you. We thank you so much for this Sunday. We ask that, Lord, you'd bless us all together as we continue to walk in your ways. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm so delighted to be here today to share the living word of God. My name is Pastor Robert Ndungi. I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And as we connect this day, 
I would like to make a word of prayer, then we continue. Let's pray together. Thank you so much, our Father in heaven, for such a wonderful time you've given us to share your living word. As we do this today, we willingly submit to the authority in the name of Jesus. We submit to the speaking of the blood of Jesus. We submit to the dominion of your kingdom. And I pray that Jehovah the Most High God, that you be enthroned today in our lives and uh, in our fellowship. We love you and honor you. And I pray for your grace, for utterance, for your anointing and the power that comes from above, that you will use me as a vessel to share your word. Thank you again for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I trust God that you are all well. And I pray that today, by the sharing of the living word of God, we will be illuminated. We will receive clarity with simplicity and direction just to press on to our appointment with destiny. And this appointment for us is Lukenya Community Church. In this second quarter of the year 2021, is a mandate to just be equipped to serve through different ways and one of those ways being prayer. And today we are focusing on us getting our hands into our mandate to serve. And I will be focusing on the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number one, two, three, four, and a bit of five and six by mentioning Nehemiah chapter one through six. And as we do this, our, our tagline today will be from Nehemiah chapter number two, verse number 18b. And the paraphrase says, Arise, let us build. And then they strengthened their hands and began the good work coming into a place of rising up to rebuild, rising up to restore, rising up to revive things which are dormant, passive, and even dead, arising to do something. That is what I'm focusing on by being equipped to serve as a church, arising to serve. Arising to pray, arising to build, arising to do what the occasion demands. Nehemiah 2, 18b. And uh, the reading mainly will focus on Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, and uh, verse number 11 through 18. Nehemiah chapter number 2. And I'm going to share three points on our today's sharing. Number one is community vision and burden. Community vision and burden. Number two is community service. Community service. Number three is completing community assignments or completion of community assignments. And as we do this, I want to tell us that Nehemiah is one of the servants of God who completed the work he got his hands to do. Nehemiah was involved to do a great work, rebuilding the broken walls. And in the days of Nehemiah, as a way of introduction, Nehemiah gets visitors. His brethren visited him in his place of work. And as they were connecting, he wanted to find out the welfare of his people. And they brought very heartbreaking information. 
that the welfare was not good. The walls were broken, the gates were burnt down, and the people were in disgrace, the people were in shame, the people were in distress. And this is the information which moved Nehemiah into action. My Bible says, Nehemiah chapter one, verse number four, that he sat down, he wept, he prayed, and he fasted. And therefore today, my point number one is having a community vision and a burden for our community. How do we get ourselves into this? This can be basically through what we know about our community, what we have heard about our community, what we see every day in our community, what we hear every day about our community. Issues, challenges, the suffering, the affliction, and the lack, the poverty, the oppression, the illiteracy, all that, whether through our seeing, whether through our hearing or listening, or whether through information we have read or heard, that can be a source of ourselves getting a burden for our communities. The other way, the Lord can give us a burden, and especially through prayer and through sharing his word, like we are doing this morning. And I pray today that the Lord may give us a burden for our community, a vision for our community. The Lukenya community is our responsibility to do God's will. It's our assignment to establish God's kingdom. And therefore, we need like Nehemiah to pause, to take leave from our day-to-day -day work, to retreat from our daily assignments, to pause from what we've been doing every other day. Nehemiah requested for permission for leave of absence to go back home. But before he went back home for a period of time, he engaged in weeping, wailing for his people, praying, fasting, bringing repentance to the law for his people. And I would like to invite us today to pray, to repent, to fill our communities, to, to get into their shoes, what they are going through the oppression, the suffering, the sicknesses, the diseases, the poverty, the lack, the conflicts, all that. For one moment, think through, pause and reflect, get a feeling, even emotionally, about some of the things which are happening in our community. And may the Lord use that to give us a burden and a vision for our community. Nehemiah received that from the information he got from his brethren. Number two, community service. Community service. Nehemiah requested for permission. Nehemiah requested for authorities to have access to resources. Nehemiah did a survey on ground in the community. Scripture in Nehemiah chapter number two says he went around even in the night without the knowledge of anybody to get a feel, to observe what was happening, to get a reality of the broken walls, the burnt gates, and the distress of the people. And therefore, as we think about getting into community service, this means several things. Number one, mobilizing ourselves. Many times we, we think that the Lord needs money 
the Lord needs other resources. But before those things come into place, into kingdom work, God needs me. God needs you. When the Lord gets us as we are, he will get our time, he will get our monies, he will get our other resources. And when Nehemiah submitted and was available to the Lord, he requested now to have access to other resources. He went ahead to mobilize the people for community work. And we see a level of community service in Nehemiah chapter 3. When you read the whole of the chapter first, number 1 to first number 32 of Nehemiah chapter 3, we see different groups, different age groups, different leaders, different people in different roles and responsibilities coming in to rebuild the walls. And part of those people were the priests, God meets, perfumers, business people, merchants, the Levites, and one of the verses mentions about daughters from one of the families, they joined into the work. And the amazing thing is this, verse number five, for all the different groupings who came to do this work, only one group of nobles, the Bible says, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of their Lord. Only that one single group in the whole chapter of all the people did not put their shoulders to the work. All the other people came into the rebuilding work, doing the gates, doing the wall, and whatever else needed to be done. And that was the greatest breakthrough into this assignment and they had the resources. Arise, let us build. We are strengthening our hands to begin the good work in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, we need to focus on completion of community assignments. As we think and plan for Lokenya community, one of the things we need to trust God is to tap into the grace to finish every assignment, every project, every initiative, every intervention, every program we get our hands into pursuing. This year, 2021 and beyond. And scripture says in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 15, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. The wall was done in two phases, 26 days and the 26 days. And in 52 days, the entire project was completed. This means if we are going to glorify the Lord in our day and our generation and in our community, we need to tap in this grace to complete whatever we get our hands to do. Looking at Nehemiah, looking at the wall which was completed in 52 days, there were many challenges. Scripture in chapter number two brings a picture of Tobias and Sanballat. And now they came in just to be part of the opposers, the barriers, the blocks into the work. And when the work began in chapter number three, in chapter number four, we see so much of a great opposition. And the later, a lot in chapter six, a lot of conspiracy, communications to instill fear, 
communication to derail the work, utterances of mockery, utterances of rejection, and despise. All that came forth, back and forth, even threats and uh, communication, which to Nehemiah would mean like he was rebelling against the governor and the leaders of the day. All that came into place. But in the midst of this, Nehemiah and his people encouraged themselves. They prayed and they kept focus into the work. And this means there will be moments of discouragement. There will be moments of derailment. There will be moments of feeling like resigning, quitting. But in the midst of that, we need to make a choice. We are pressing on to the end because finishing the work glorifies the Lord. Jesus in John chapter number 17, verse number four, he made a submission to the Father that he glorified the Father by completing what the Father entrusted with Jesus Christ to do. Paul, writing to Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 4, verse number 7, Paul is saying he finished the race and he also kept the faith. Finishing the race, finishing the work, glorifies the Lord. And as we press on with this year, 2021, as we think through into serving the Lord in our community, today I want to submit to us that there is grace to labor and complete the work. Paul says also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8 to 10, that Though he was the least of the apostles, though he was the last of the apostles, though he was the worst of the apostles, he labored more abundantly. And by laboring more abundantly, he glorified the Lord. He accomplished more work than the other apostles because he understood the mystery in the grace to serve the Lord. And I pray today as I come to a closure that we tap into this grace to serve, to have a burden for the Kenya community and to rally together, to co-work together, to relate together, to serve jointly. Whether in normal visits, whether in doing other different diverse unique assignments in our community, the occasion demands we do all this jointly. All of us leaving no one behind. Leaving no one behind. Rising up to do the work. Rising up to complete the work. Rising up in burden to pray, to repent, to intercede, to, to weep, to wail on behalf of our people. And that is my call today. That is my submission today. That is my invitation today as we close with a word of prayer. Let us pray together. Thank you, our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus. I pray for this dear Kowakas, Lokenya Community Church, that King of Glory will find joy in humility. I pray that we will find excitement. I pray that we'll be passionate. We'll find a reason to serve in our community, to honor you in our community as we rally ourselves to serve you. Give us all the grace we need. Give us all the strength we need. Give us all the power we need. Give us all the anointing we need. Give us, my Father, connections to all the resources we need, to all the networks we need, to rise up and serve, to rise up and build, to rise up and restore our community, to rise up and be part of the revival in our community, in the mighty name of the Lord. And I pray, my Father, that you're being glorified. We love you and we honor you for this, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us as we press on to serve in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless you.